One of the main topics on which we have been reporting on this show, as well as in our written journalism, is the scam industry called the anti-disinformation industry, in which all sorts of groups emerge with benign-sounding names, almost always funded by the same small set of liberal billionaires like George Soros and Pierre Omidyar, or by the US security state and Western security intelligence agencies that purport to be able to identify online what is and is not disinformation, claiming that they employ experts who are trained in that field, even though it's a completely fraudulent field of discipline. There is no such thing as an apolitical disinformation expert. And yet every time one of these groups emerge, it feeds to the media whatever little report it has about who is, what, who is spreading disinformation and who are pro-Russian accounts, and the media mindlessly spread it, spread it with no scrutiny or journalistic inquiry. Remember, the Twitter files revealed one of the worst frauds of all, the Hamilton 68 dashboard invented in 2016 by a group led by Bill Kristol with funding from Pierre Omidyar that purported to keep a secret list of pro-Russian accounts and constantly made claims about stories being emanating not from American citizens or organically, but from pro-Russian accounts, even though it kept the list secret and refused to divulge it, only for Matt Taibbi and other reporters to be able to show with the Twitter files that it was essentially a list of just the 600 people, mostly Americans, who simply had dissonant views on foreign policy that they labeled pro-Russian. Here we have yet another group that emerged to produce this extraordinary headline in AP just from yesterday, quote, pro-Moscow voices try to steer Ohio train disaster debate. And it's an article that just simply passed along uncritically the claims of this brand new group with almost no journalistic questioning, quote, soon after a train derailed and spilled toxic chemicals in Ohio last month, anonymous pro-Russian accounts started spreading misleading claims and anti-American propaganda about it on Twitter using Elon Musk's new verification system to expand their reach while creating the illusion of credibility. The accounts, which parroted Kremlin talking points on myriad topics, claimed without evidence that authorities in Ohio were lying about the true impact of the chemical spill. The accounts spread fear-mongering posts that preyed on legitimate concerns about pollution and health effects and compared the response to the derailment with America's support for Ukraine following its invasion by Russia. The accounts identified by Reset's researchers, Reset is this brand new group no one has ever heard of, that the AP just takes this report from and uncritically publishes, received an extra boost from Twitter itself in the form of blue check marks. Before Musk purchased Twitter last year, its check marks denoted accounts run by verified users, often public figures, celebrities, or journalists. It was seen as a mark of authenticity on a platform known for bots and spam accounts. While researchers spotted clues suggesting some of the accounts are linked to coordinated efforts by Russian disinformation agencies, Others were American, showing the Kremlin doesn't always have to pay to get its message out. So if you were somebody reading about concerns about the train derailment and explosion by East, in East Palestine and the botched response from the Biden administration and the, tra uh, the Department of Transportation led by Pete Buttigieg, you were apparently joining in a Kremlin disinformation campaign and not, as you thought, criticizing your own government over what ought to have been the concerns of everybody, which were the health risks to the people of that community. Now suddenly we're to believe that this came from pro-Russian Twitter accounts. And it wasn't just AP that mindlessly and uncritically spread it. So, did, so too did all sorts of people with the HR title of journalist and corporate media. Here, for example, we see the, unsurprisingly, the tweet from the now-fired CNN host Brian Stelter, and his tweet was just very representative of how the corporate media constantly just repeats claims like parrots with no questioning of any kind. Here is his tweet, quote, pro-Russian Twitter accounts hype misleading claims and, quote, anti-establishment propaganda about the East Palestine derailment, quote, using Elon Musk's new verification system to expand their reach while creating the illusion of credibility. David Klepper reports. By reports, he means took this new report from the Omidyar-funded group 
and just wrote up the press release and that was the end of the story. In response to Brian Stelter's tweet, I asked him a set of questions that of course he ignored that to me were just very obvious are the questions that if somebody tried to give me a report like that, I would immediately ask. There you see my response, quote, which are the pro-Russian accounts? Who determines who is, quote, pro-Russia? How was that determination made? Do any of these questions enter your head even for a second before you just uncritically pass along claims like these? Now, even just a small amount of research reveals who it is who funds this group, and we'll get to that in a second, but we emailed this group, Reset, to ask exactly those questions. If we can put this on the screen, here was the email where in order to do this reporting, we ask, quote, number one, where is the list of pro-Russian accounts? In other words, if you're claiming that this came from pro-Russian accounts, who are these pro-Russian accounts? Number two, how is the, this determination made? How do you decide who is pro-Russian and not? Is opposition to the U.S. proxy war in Ukraine sufficient to become, quote, pro-Russian? Who knows? It's a secret list and a secret formula. Number three, has anyone reviewed the list to verify its accuracy? And number four, please provide a few sample names of those who are on it. You could tell by a couple of the quotes mentioned in the AP article which anonymous or pseudonym, pseudonym accounts were included on the list, but in, 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 it was very difficult to understand why those accounts were listed as pro-Russian. But how can you call yourself a journalist if all you do is take a list or a claim from a new group that just pops up without mentioning who their funding is and has a secret list of pro-Russian groups that refuses to divulge and then create headlines that stories that are actually coming from real Americans are instead being pushed by the Kremlin. Here, right on their funding page, which we looked at, you can see that it's yet another group, like so many of these groups, funded by the eBay billionaire, Pierre Midiar, who, full disclosure, also funded The Intercept when I was there. You see it, it says that the group, this new group, Reset, it's a nonprofit, and their founding funders are Luminite and the Sandor Foundation. Luminite is a global philanthropic organization that funds and supports nonprofit and for-profit organizations and advocates for the policies and actions that helps build stronger societies. It was founded by the Omidyar Group, a diverse collection of companies, organizations, and initiatives established by Pierre Omidyar, the founder of eBay, and his wife, Pam. Reset is a program of Luminite Projects Limited that is a UK limited company owned by Luminite, founded by the Omidyar Group, a US-based philanthropic network. Over and over and over, this is exactly what we have, which is these shady groups, that appear claiming to have secret lists like Joe McCarthy had of people they claim are promoting pro-Russian propaganda. No one can see those lists. No one has any idea how this determination was made or who is making these assessments. And the media just creates uncritical headlines based on them. This story is now a Kremlin, organization, a Kremlin plot. This story is being pushed by pro-Russian accounts. This is what happened after 2016 when Democrats realized they lost the election and decided to blame not themselves, but among other things, a free internet, and decided to fund this whole scam industry that now calls any dissent from their orthodoxy disinformation and blames any stories they dislike, such as criticizing the Biden administration for its failure to respond to this train disaster in an appropriate way as coming from pro-Russian accounts in order to demean it. It's an incredibly transparent tactic. It's incredibly shady, and yet it's one that the corporate media, as always, falls for because they want to. There's zero journalistic questioning about any of this, and Reset, of course, fails to provide the most basic answers to the most basic questions, ones that should have been asked by AP before publishing that story. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.